stick around. Oh, I will. let's do this. <laughs> the Red Scare is real. A menace interfering with Blue Blood Dominance. Trying to help fall this crowd, Dayton Schroeder, to the top. No, no, no. Help them be topping college basketball again. It's the nation's longest winning streak, chasing their first ever one seed. Oh, you know they're named after flight pioneers, Orville and Wilbur Wright, but not just airplanes. These people are on a rocket ship in a new orbit. Zero G's. So you better stow those tray tables. Make sure the seats are in the upfront and lock possession because we are flying with Dayton. In about a week and a half, next door from where we are, they will be playing the first four. The NCAA tournament will start. There will be no first four talk for the Dayton Flyers. They're thinking final four. That's the orbit they hope to be in. Glad to have you with us. Chris Davis, Lafonso Ellis, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Billis from the Frerich Center. That's the old Dayton basketball arena. 50 years ago, and you're welcome. We love Duke, but we're happy to be here too, for sure. You know, you will get the reason we're not at UD Arena, the A-10 Women's Tournament is going on, but they will come to wherever they can celebrate their flyers, Fuzz. There's no question about it. Had the privilege of playing against Dayton when I was in college. There's two constants for the Dayton Flyers, winning and some of the best fans in all of college basketball. This is a basketball school. This is a basketball city, and this is a home of one of the greatest coaches in the history of game, Coach Don Donner. There he is. Grant, some great history here, Jay, with this program. You know, Dayton's not just a great basketball program and, and a great team, certainly this year. It's, a, it's an amazing basketball community. And the, the term Dayton Strong is used for a lot of reasons. But this program has really been handed down. The love of the program has been handed down generation to generation at Dayton. And you, you know, look, you can feel it here. We don't have to say, we don't have to say anymore. Or this crowd is unbelievable, but this is not unusual for Dayton. Dayton's going to try to finish off an undefeated regular season in 8-10 play. This afternoon and tonight against George Washington. The 8-10 is wrapped up. That is not the case in the ACC, where there is still much to play for. Here's what's at stake in the ACC. Boston College and Florida State. Now, Florida State, if they win, they did it, came back and beat Notre Dame at the end. Trent Flores heroics if Florida State wins. They are ACC champion. They have the one seed in the ACC tournament. They can win the ACC outright if they get a little help from Virginia as well. Louisville comes in. Louisville can get a share of the title simply by winning the game. Jordan Wara hit UVA for 22 last time. But one thing you might want to watch from the Hoots, Thomas Paul Tensai had seven threes the last time they faced the Bill. They'll need some offense from him. Virginia can get all the way up to a two seed if they win and Florida State and Duke wins. Duke is tied with Virginia game behind the co-leaders. They have Carolina. You know how they pulled that thing out of the fire somehow, some way. A couple of last second shots. The game are being in overtime from Wendell Moore. That rematch coming at 6 o'clock Eastern time. There's a possibility of a four-way tie in the ACC. Louisville to win it outright, Florida State to win it outright, depending on the confluence of games. It is time now to look at how Duke's Trey Jones is making the assist. Presented by State Farm. Final minute of regulation and overtime on February 8th, the first meeting. Jones was brilliant. Outscored Carolina, outshot them, certainly did better from the free throw line than the Tar Heels did. So you have the rematch coming up tonight. Duke's winning a champion in the Here, out of all the things going in the ACC, 
my favorite scenario is the four-way tie. You don't know who the one seed is until you find out who finishes fifth, and that'll be determined today. But there are two teams in the ACC that have winning streaks longer than one game. Virginia and North Carolina, which has won three in a row. North Carolina obviously is on an upswing, having won their three in a row, but it's not just that they've won, it's how they're winning. I mean, they're back to playing the way that Roy Williams wants them to play. They're getting up and down the floor, they're averaging 90 points over that three games, they're shooting over 50%, over 40% from three. And then Cole Anthony, I think Seth, Seth you said he's settled in. And I think that's exactly right. He's playing with, with really good pace, but he's changing pace, changing direction, and he's not rushing anything. And over his last three, he's, he's been averaging 20 on the season. He's averaging 24 over his last three, and he's shooting over 50% and shooting over 50% for three. So I think that's a real key is how he handles the pressure that Duke's going to bring and can Duke rebound with North Carolina because North Carolina is still one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. Yeah, the game slowed down for Cole Anthony, but Garrison Brooks has been a dominant player. And he's a guy that can get Duke's dominant player in foul trouble. I look for Duke to play some zone today because they cannot play without Vernon Carey. And a way to protect Vernon Carey, especially in ball screen situation, <laughs> is to go some zone. Teams that attack Carey off that high ball screen, he needs to play. So I look for Duke to play a little zone because if not, I think North Carolina is going to play through Garrison Brooks on the block and go right at him and make Carey defend. So you think it's going to be Coach Kahine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. And then again, they, they just... They turn that basketball over 18 times. They can't turn it over. You can't give Duke easy points. And I think, secondly, if you can't allow Trey Jones to just dictate the game off the dribble. I felt they gave him too much room, too much space. North Carolina typically double teams you when you come over the half court. I look for them to try to get the basketball out of his hands and make others have to beat them today. I hear what you're saying about the zone, but Carolina cut up Syracuse's zone. Yep. They shot very well against NC State, and they were blistering against Wake Forest. Wake tried his own, they knocked in threes right over the top of it. So Carolina is about a 30% shooting team from three on the year. They're shooting well right now. They are shooting well right now, but in this game, what it's important, they got to keep Vernon Carey on the court. When he goes yep. off the court, it's a different team. They need someone to play through, and then the game becomes easier for Trey Jones and easier for everyone else. He comes off the court. There's so much pressure on Trey Jones to defend the ball and also initiate offense. Oh, and by the way, also score. So I can see them changing the yeah, yeah. But even if they play zone, the, the key in playing the zone against NC State was keeping NC State out of the lane. Yes. The lane. Now, now if, if Carolina's getting into the lane, both off the dribble and throwing in their yeah. big guys, the problem is if you play zone, obviously, rebounding's going to be an yes. issue. And it gives Carolina a free run up to the glass where they're at their best. I think the more Carolina can see 2-3 zone, the better it favors Carolina yep. because of just what you said, their ability to rebound the basketball on the offense. That sounds good, but you better keep Cole Anthony out of the lane because right now he's making the game easier yes. for everyone else, and that's a way to contain him and keep carrying yes. on the floor. You know, all of my friends, my new best friends here at the Frederick <laughs> Center are wondering, why are you guys talking about teams not going to make the tournament and a little three seed like Duke? You're going to be talking about teams that are favorites to make the final four. But maybe the day in college basketball, at least in terms of names that you are used to seeing. All of these teams, Baylor, San Diego State, North Florida State, you could throw Creighton in there. Uh, all of these teams that have had excellent runs, maybe on the one or two line. And maybe, just maybe, the real expectation is to see one of these teams make the Final Four like the Dayton Flyers. <laughs> They've got a guy in Obi Toppin that absolutely can dominate the game. He understands how to play. He can beat you at all four levels. He is really special. First and foremost, his ability to run the floor. Offensive transitions about winning the first two steps. Right there, he's in position to block out on the defense man. Watch him turn and run. Look at the separation he creates. He wins the first two steps. And when he wins the first two steps, this is what happens most times. Thank you very much. He is a terrific cutter without the basketball. He's really good in the ball screen. Coming off of this ball screen, watching short roll. He has the ability to catch the ball, collect himself. One, two, three, four players surrounding him. He collects himself, he's on balance, and he can finish. You put him on the block, 
and he has the ability to read the defense. The defender right here, he's on his high side, so what does he do? He whirls baseline. Look where he throws the ball and the ground he covers. In transition, in a ball screen, on the block, he can score at every single level. He's so hard to prepare for. All we talk about is the real deal and in the conversation with player here. I absolutely love Obi Toppin's game, but for Dayton is 18, and they have one of the most underrated guards in the country in Jalen Crutcher. His ability to be able to make plays off the bounce in the lane, knock down the three, every Batman needs a Robin, Jalen Crutcher is Robin for Obi Toppin. We know they're great players, and we'll say, wow, well, what a surprise that Dayton, Creighton, Baylor, is make the Final Four. Should we be surprised, or is that what this season is? Would that be as scripted if some of these teams make it to Atlanta? I think it's more as scripted this year because, uh, you know, Dayton, you mentioned Baylor, I think uh, San Diego State, uh, I would also say BYU now. All, the, all those teams have been incredibly consistent. So in a year when we're saying there's nobody that's super powerful or overwhelming in talent, uh, you've got teams that are unbelievably consistent. I mean, you don't go 27-2 and two without being legit. These guys are legit. San Diego State is legit. I think Creighton is legit, too. And there's another team that I think maybe we might call non-traditional, even though they're in the Final Four in 1989, is, is Seton Hall. I agree. And Seton Hall's got a star in Miles Powell. So don't be surprised if they wind up there. I mean, we, we've got, I don't think the tournament is wide open. Not everybody can win. Everybody can lose, but not everybody can win. But Dayton's one of the nine teams that can win this thing. Okay. All right, real quick here. You say you have nine. I think I have about 12. Would all of those teams that you mentioned, would all of them be in your nine? No, no, no. not all of them. I, I wouldn't put I wouldn't put uh, BYU in that right now. Okay. How about Florida State? Out there, Florida State, the Rodney Dangerfield of college basketball. <laughs> those dudes can suffocate you with their defense. Yeah, I, I like Florida State, but another team that I've been talking about all year long is Baylor because of their defense, fourth most efficient defense in the country. They struggle with scoring at time, but they have elite guards. Score. <laughs> <laughs> and all of these teams, at least according to the AP poll, is ch are chasing Kansas. Kansas can lay claim to an undisputed Big 12 title today if they can beat Texas Tech. But what is in dispute, the NCAA allegations against the Jayhawk program. They have filed notice that they are saying that they did nothing wrong and all the charges coming from the NCAA as a result of the college basketball bribery scandal. Remains to be seen whether this case will be adjudicated by the independent accountability process that is new from the NCAA created last year. Probably most important to note that whatever happens with this case will not impact Kansas in the tournament this year. Back to basketball and things on the floor. It's over a week away from Selection Sunday inside College Game Day. Coach K on part two after that miracle finish in Chapel Hill gave Duke the first victory in this age-old rivalry. And Duke has now won 51 of the last 101. And how about Senior Night? Senior Night story snacks has become a phenomenon. There are so many different paths to get to those great Senior Night moments. We will take you on so many of them. And also, it's bubble time, only a few bids to allow, will you accept this bid to the NCAA tournament? Coming up next, it's College Game Day's version of The Bachelor, called The Bubble. Reese, Jay, Seth, and Fonz, each with a final rose to give. They will tell you which teams deserve to be in the NCAA tournament, and which teams will be left out, broken hearted, and have their bubbles burst. The Red
college game day is covered by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. And in part by Dave. Only Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on FXX. Streaming next day on FX on Hulu. And Smile Direct Club. Straighten your teeth three times sooner than braces. Students at UD had a contest to come up with the most creative sheet to hang out the whole art project. And here are the winners hanging up in Frederick Center. My favorite is the one with Obi Top that says prepare for turbulence over on the side. Because he, he can make he can make it turbulent for you. We'll hear from Obi in a minute. This is the Mountain West Conference semifinal. San Diego State against Boise State. Malachi Flynn, the transfer has been terrific, and then Flynn Jay would find Jordan Shack. Knocked it in, tied at 40, about six minutes to go. Flynn to KJ Fagan, another transfer. Dutch has done a great job putting these transfers together. Bill has told you in the first part, this Aztec team is legit. They go on to the championship game where they'll face another good squad in Utah State. Well, the Greece, I'm standing here with David's highest flyer, OB Toppin, the leading candidate for National Player of the Year. And we're going to take a look at OB's top three dunks as we determine with a panel vote. And we're going to start with number one. This is called the putback on January 29th against Duquesne, a one-handed putback slam. OB, that's pretty good. No commentary on that. Let, let it speak for itself. Yes, sir. Number two is brotherly love against Rhode Island. Island. I had to put my brother on Sports Center. I had to do it. Did you know your brother was behind you there? No. That is At the end of the game, I found out. You're not going to get nice holiday gifts for that. Also against Rhode Island, on your birthday, this is birthday bash. The pass ahead, one-handed windmill. Windmill special. That's ridiculous. Yes, sir. All right, we're, we're going to celebrate uh, Obi's birthday by going 94 feet with Obi Tapa. Now we are in on a volleyball court, so we're going to have to we're going to have to come up with a 94 feet route. So, so try to stick with me. So 94 feet with Obi Tapa. All right. When was the first time that you ever dunked in a basketball game? Oh, my first game of my senior year in high school it was my first time. And was it was it a windmill or did you just squeak it in? No, it was a regular one hand dunk. All right, what, who's your favorite Instagram follow? Uh, John Moran just followed me uh, two days ago, so he's probably my uh, favorite. John Moran followed you. All right, what does mom make that you like the best? Definitely empanadas. She makes the best empanadas ever, so. What, and I asked you this in Maui, that was pretty fun. What was, what's your biggest fear? Uh, being stuck in the middle of the ocean. That, that's definitely my biggest fear. Yeah, that's a good do fear. It. You don't have to worry about that too much in Dayton. Yes, sir. And uh, let's stand next to your coach, Anthony Grant. Howdy. <laughs> Anthony, this is your school to come back here and this quickly at this type of atmosphere. How does this compare to what your expectations were when you returned? This, this is a special place, man. You know, there's a great history here. Coach Donaher, some of the coaches that have come before. This place, for decades, has been one of the one of the epicenters of college basketball. It's a great environment. We got the best fans in the country. Red Stair, our students. So I knew coming back that there was a passion here for basketball and if we could put together a staff, put together a team that, that saw what I saw, that we could do some special things. You know what a champion looks like, been part of championships with Florida. How does this team compare in terms of characteristics that a championship team needs? Well, I think the biggest thing is, is they love each other. They play for each other. It's a great group that understands the things myself and my, and my staff have told them that we need to do both on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively, to become the best version of ourselves. So we're going to take it one game at a time. We've got a big game tonight against GW. Hopefully we can get that win as we head into Brooklyn for the A-10 tournament, and we'll take it one step at a time. Yeah, Anthony, uh, some of your players and your staff have told me that, that throughout the course of this, when the pressure has been building, you've talked to your team about having the joy that they had in the locker room before you played in Maui. Yeah. How, how have they continued to play with joy when there's so much riding on this? Well, they, they like I said, they, these guys, they really enjoy each other. You know, and they, they're all, I've asked them all to, to sacrifice a little bit and understand that if we could come together, that the sum would be greater than the individual parts. So we have a lot of guys on different nights. It's different guys been that way all year long. I think we've seen an unbelievable uh, 
stretch of games here in 8-10 play, just with the competition that we've had. So I think these guys are prepared. We've been in different environments. We've had a lot of different competitions. So I think they understand what the journey is all about. Got a lot of good individual parts. So. No question about that. Chance to go undefeated in 8-10 play. Not still undefeated in regulation, by the way, too. Anthony, best of luck. to you, Obi. Great right. to see you. Thank you so much. One quick one. He's a tough guy. Does he ever scare you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you don't want to get on his best side. <laughs> Everybody stayed on Anthony's good side this year. What winning will do it for you. Seth Fonz. Coming up on Carlos Game Day, will you accept this bid? We're going to be handing out some roses, telling you who's in and who's out of the NCAA tournament. That's your sign. Senior Night's Emotion, stand on a four-year journey. We're going to introduce you to some of those journeys, especially the one of Vermont's Josh Seidel. Wanting to get back to being able to play basketball. And gave me something to fight for and something to strive for. Although I had butterflies, I was so excited just to be able to go out there and just be with the team. You're watching College Game Day, covered by State Farm. Tonight, 8.30 Eastern Time on ABC. You better get on ESPN Plus. One Eastern, you got Baylor and West Virginia. Baylor hoping to get a little help and get a share of that Big 12 title. And then number three, Dayton and GW on ESPN Plus. 120 men's and women's championship games coming up. Champ Week on ESPN Plus. You know, one week from tomorrow is Selection Sunday. The competition as if it had reached the stages where there are only a few roses to go around. It's as if we've reached the hometowns here. Eight roses on the table, but only four can be given out to go along with bids to the NCAA tournament. We have loaded up eight contestants into our version of the limos, which is Bobby's College Game Day bus, and four of them will be fortunate enough to get a trip to the mansion. First, let's meet Indiana Hoosiers from Bloomington, Indiana. A top 30 strength of record, 54 in the net. They've got five Q1 wins. They're a good rebounding team, and Trace Jackson Davis is a force for the Hoosiers. Next, the Memphis Tigers from Memphis, Tennessee. They've got just two high-quality wins. Their net, strength of record, BPI, all in mid-50s to mid-60s. I know that they feel like this will be a precious bid for them, home of the Blues, but feels like home of the NIT team unless someone follows their heart and goes with Memphis. The North Carolina State Wolfpack, hailing from Raleigh, North Carolina. Old Tuffy is still stinging by being left out despite a net in the 30s last year. They've improved their non-conference schedule. They might have as good an offensive potential as any team left, unless it is the Richmond Spiders from Richmond, Virginia. This team unleashes arachnophobia on the road. They are eight and three in true road games. This is a solid offensive squad. Maybe the most efficient offense among our eight contenders vying for four spots in the NCAA tournament. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights from the banks of the old Raritan. Only one win away from home, and I understand that's a problem, but love sometimes isn't defined by numbers. Scarlet Knights have four quad one wins. They went over Seton Hall, Penn State, Wisconsin, Maryland. There's also the Texas Longhorns from Austin, Texas. Texas, you don't know what you're getting from Texas. Hot and cold, back and forth, look dead in the water. All of a sudden, they're back with three Q1 wins, two of them on the road in the last couple of weeks. The University of Southern California Trojans from the inner city of Los Angeles. Four quad one wins. The inner city team can really score in the paint. Freshman Onyeko Congo could be a lottery pick. Might give our committee pause because they don't protect the defensive glass and they don't make free throws. The Utah State Aggies from Logan, Utah, they are just searching for love, but they might very well just command love by beating San Diego State, getting an automatic marriage into the tournament tonight. But they do have top 100 non-conference strength of schedule. They've beaten Ford and LSU, and they've got a sharp shooter in Sam Merrill who is right at a 50-40-90 guy from the field, from three, and from the free throw line. There are a lot of worthy contestants, a lot of them really tear at your heart. I know you've built relationships with these teams over the course of the year, LaFonso. LaFonso, would you hand out our first bid? Remember, eight contestants, but only four can be chosen. Gladly. 
<laughs> this is going to be extremely difficult for me as a Notre Dame guy, but USC, please come forward. USC, I'm so proud of you. By the way, it's been two years, and you've done a terrific job of taking care of your home court. 13 and 2 at home. You have two phenomenal players. You know, Yeka Okongwu, who's going to be a lottery pick next year. Jonah Matthews, 37% from three. You guys are terrific defensively. You have four quad one wins. So important. Could you please accept my bid? The relationship between LaFonza and the UFC has really developed. We've seen it over the course of the season. Seth, will you extend the bid? I have to tell you, I know exactly how all of you feel. <laughs> I was with you for 48 straight months. <laughs> <laughs> Rutgers, the home of Jim Valvano, will you please step forward? It's been a long time, a very, long time. 1991, to be exact, was the last time you earned a bid. But you've struggled some. As Reese said, one and eight on the road, the NCAA tournament's played on a neutral court. But you're a special team. You're an old school team with old school values. Rebound, defend, be physical. You've got Jill Baker, Ron Harper Jr. You have what it takes to earn a bid. So would you accept this rose and this bid? Thank you. We now have USC and Rutgers, who still have a place in the mansion. Stay Billis. Texas. Texas, you showed your vulnerability early, but you fought through adversity, and you've shown tremendous strength and tremendous heart, and you've got smarts. Will you accept this bid? <laughs> We've tried to work together as a committee, but I look over at the bids you guys have extended and, and these wonderful contestants we have left, and, and you guys have put me in an extraordinarily awkward position. You, you have extended bids to teams that cannot score. <laughs> Most of the teams that are in this have been good defensive teams, separate teams to win games in the tournament, teams that can score. You know, you, you put me with a crazy team in Texas that looked dead in the water, and now you have them in. Reese, you're overthinking this. Follow, me. <laughs> Follow your heart. Follow my heart? Follow your heart. This is not about analytics. It's about your heart. This is so hard. What we've had with all of these teams is real. It's been real. Indiana. Indiana, we've had ups and downs. You, you can hear it from the crowd. It's been a rocky ride. <laughs> I think many times, Indiana, you've underachieved. You've lost to Purdue twice. I don't know how this happens, but there's just something in my heart that makes me believe that there's more there. And we've gotten started. We can get Trace Jackson Davis to dominate, just hit a few threes, maybe a little more consistent. Indiana, will you accept this bid? These four will move on. I want to emphasize to all of you teams that we have believed in all of you over the course of the season. We know that you have your strong suits. Utah State, you might just very well earn your way in no matter what. But I want you to just take a moment, take your time, collect your thoughts, mourn if you must, say your goodbyes, and as likely we'll see all of you in the NIT. This was real, though. This was it real. It was real. <laughs> remember, remember, 
Seth Greenberg is going to write a book called Life on the Bubble. He, says, he knows your pain right now. And if you need directions to any NIT site, Seth can give them to you. <laughs> Senior moment. <laughs> I actually received that for my favorite player, Kevin Durant. So I found that to be, be very special that Kevin Durant would uh, recognize me. That tweet actually says, I see you snipe. A lot of people had a joke with me saying that uh, Kevin Durant would recognize you as snipe, so you have to change your name. Uh, say Snacks to Sniper, uh, Sniper Snacks. Wendy's Wooden Rock is brought to you by Wendy's Breakfast. Download the Wendy's app and get a deal on your new favorite. You up for this? Man, you cannot be dropping those free Wendy's breakfast sandwiches. They fed all the students waiting to get inside Prairie Center this morning. What a great team. So appreciative to all the Dayton fans and students for being here. A couple games coming up Saturday. Showcase Kansas trying to lock up the Big 12 outright and get a number one seed. And then we are headed to Duke. North Carolina and Duke part of the Sonic Blockbuster. If only this one can live up to the drama of the first one. Welcome to Chapel Hill. The energy's palpable right now. This Carolina team has not lost 12 games. I don't know where it's been. My mom would always say, make sure you only let people on your bus who are good. Not let trade drive my bus. Jones misses it. Those are the, the moments you live for and play for. far under 500. That's an impossible finish for the Blue Devils, and you're going to see some guys who are on the Wendy's Wooden Watch. The players on the 2020 National Battle are going to announce the top 15 finalists. Trey Jones is in there. You see Obi Toppin from Dayton also among the 15. For more, you can go to ESPN.com and search Wooden. Time now for the Saturday shoot-around. We have a huge showdown in the Big East coming up this afternoon in Omaha, where your final four-bound Creighton Blue Jays will take on Seton Hall. Creighton can get the number one seed in the tournament with a victory. Hall wins the, wins the conference outright with a victory. Villanova could get a share of it, too, depending on the results. Yeah, no question about it, but this Seton Hall team is the second most efficient defensive team in the Big East. Offensively, they're absolutely terrific. Miles Powell, one of the best scorers in all of college basketball. He was out for a couple games with a concussion. It allowed other guys to be able to step up. Now they're deep. Jared Ronan to start to score the basketball. And Sandro Mavlis Kellisvili missed several games. He's now back. 6'11 shooter. 23 points a game over the last couple games. He's shooting 44% from three. They're healthy. Seton Hall is ready to roll. You just love to say his name. Yes. <laughs> in the Pac-12, we gave a bid to USC sitting right on the bubble. They have UCLA coming up today. UCLA and Oregon are tied on top of the Pac-12 standing. The Bruins, the Bruins were dead. This is like a Lazarus-like comeback for them. It's unbelievable. Think about this. UCLA was 10 and 10. Just lost to Oregon by 100 points. <laughs> and all of a sudden they've won 11 of the last 13. How have they done it? They bought into the identity of Nick Cronin. The hardest thing to do as a coach is to get your team back. He got them back. They're defending. They're rebounding. Most importantly, they're sharing the ball offensively. And two players have emerged. Tiger Campbell is a point guard, taking great care of the basketball. And Chris Smith has given him a go-to score. And UCLA is for real right now. UCLA and Oregon only played once, finished in a tie. Oregon gets the top seed in the upcoming Pac-12 tournament. UCLA probably played its way in. Big Ten is still in a mess, too. Wisconsin's about to play in. Yet Wisconsin might get a share of the title. A week ago, we were at Maryland talking about them winning the thing outright. They've got to play Michigan tomorrow. They might not even get in. Who's the best, or, you know, get a share of the title? Who's the best team in the conference? That's a, that's the key question, because the Big Ten, I think we all agree, is the best conference in the country. They're likely to get 11 teams in the tournament, 10 minimum. But how many teams can win the national championship in that list? I think Michigan State is playing the 
best and trending the best, along with Wisconsin. But I think Michigan State's a little bit better. I think they've got a great opportunity to reach another Final Four and win the Big Ten's first title since 2000. Last wow. time Michigan State did it, too. Well, those two road wins that Michigan State has put together back to back. Really impressed that they'll get a chance to get a share of the Big Ten title if they can take care of business. Wisconsin also hoping to do that. If Wisconsin can win at Indiana, there's Devontae Green. That is coming up noon Eastern time. They're not they're not fond of their neighbors from Indiana here. As the Hoosiers are trying to fight their way into the tournament, tip-off comes in just about 12 minutes. It'll be senior day for Devontae Green and for others at Indiana. You know, the other night on senior night at North Carolina, Roy Williams sent six starters out onto the floor because he had six seniors. One of them had to leave before the game started. An unorthodox move for a starting lineup, but there is no ritualistic path to get to senior night. It is a night where you celebrate stardom, you celebrate family, you celebrate guys who were late bloomers, and sometimes you have to celebrate the moments of guys who just for a moment get to experience what could have been and what might have been. And then other times you get to experience when snacks become a full-blown feast. Chris Connolly on the phenomenon of senior night. <laughs> This jersey stays on forever. I'm proud of everybody that's all right. Thank you. Senior night in college basketball. It's been a special four years. I wouldn't want this any other way. A chance for players and fans to acknowledge and salute the members of their team's graduating class. I can't believe it's already been four years. Um, I love you guys too. This year, from New England to the Pacific Northwest. Senior night stirred up even more emotion. From Pasco, Washington, manager Matt Brown. Honoring the effort and achievement of some uniquely dedicated individuals. Johnson will kick it back out for the corner jumper. Look at the bench. A walk on who said he wanted to go to grad school and just be a part of this program. At Vermont, it was Josh Spidell. A traumatic brain injury suffered in a car accident five years ago stole his opportunity to star for the Catamounts. But on senior night, his time had finally arrived. And here's Josh Spidell, first ever NCAA basketball game. I just took a deep breath and I, I mean, I was just happy I just thought, all right, I'm about to do this. I think it was the loudest and most special that I've ever felt the building. I've been waiting five years for this, being able to hear my name, hearing just the crowd's reaction. It was just like a dream of, and I don't think I'll forget it. And at Jackson State, it was Thomas Snacks Lee, the team manager culminating his school career, and for the first time, getting to play. Coach Brooke came over to me, and he said, in two minutes, you're going in. So once he told me that in my head, I said, wow, this dream is actually about to come true. It feels very great to be a viral sensation. Who the text I actually received is actually from my favorite player, Kevin Rand. So I found it to be, to be very special that Kevin Rand would recognize me. This moment was a moment that I dreamed about, that I remember for a lifetime. Dreams that once seemed out of reach, coming true for all to see. On senior night, the biggest wins can't be found on the scoreboard. Chris Connolly with that great piece. Auburn on the road at Tennessee. Jordan Bowden, he's had a terrific career for Tennessee. You know, he is the first kid from Knoxville to be on scholarship at Tennessee in three decades. Wow. They're celebrating him as the Big Orange tries to make a late season push. They tip off against Auburn in eight and a half. This is College Game Day, covered by State Farm. Seven. College Game Day is 
covered by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. And in part by Smile Direct Club. Straighten your teeth three times sooner than braces. And Edward Jones. It's time for investing to feel individual. John Calipari just tweeted this. Ashton, meaning Ashton Hagens, didn't make the trip to Florida. They met a couple of days ago. Hagens has stepped away for personal reasons. Calipari said they'll need him in 100% for the postseason. We don't have any more details on that. We certainly wish the best to Ashton as they get ready to play Florida and end the postseason, hoping for the very best for Kentucky's fine player. Time now for the State Farm half-court shot. This is Clayton Cole with the State Farm Nation. Dayton, Ohio, representing 19,000 State Farm agents across North America. And this is Blake Anderson, senior from Cincinnati here at Dayton. You get up as many shots as you can in 19 seconds. You make one, you get $19,000. You ready to go? Nobody's made it. I need you to make this. Clinton, hand in the ball. Let's go. Make this shot, Blake. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, he's going to make one. He's got this. Yeah. Oh. On the way. That one's in there. There it is. There it is. Come on, boy. Blake, you got a chance for another one. You got it. Take your time. Get this one in. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh. That was a great effort. As good an effort as we've had all year. And you know what? You don't go home empty handed on this show, my friend. $1,900. Not 19 grand, but anybody can use that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, man. All right. Thanks. That's Blake Anderson. Hey, we have had a tremendous, tremendous morning, so let's do a little who and by how many abbreviated version. North Carolina and Duke, we're on our way there tonight. Uh, who's going to, who's leading up? We doing, everybody doing this? Give me a quick UNC and Duke. I got UNC winning by two on the road. UNC. Dominate the offensive last. Duke got lucky last time. They, they're getting ten and a half. You're saying outright. I think some people might say play the money line. Ooh, fine's going with that. <laughs> All right, what about ours? How about George Washington and Dayton, our game tonight? Fine's get started. George Washington and Dayton. Dayton's a 21 and a half point favorite. Yeah, I'm taking one in, but by 10 on the home floor, I think it'll be a closer game than that. I've got Dayton. I don't think they're going to cover. George Washington's getting better, but Dayton wins about about 15. I agree. I think it's Dayton by 15. And one of the reasons is going to be Trey Landers, who is an outstanding, mm, they yes. call him a role player. He's a star in that role. All right, UNC Duke tonight. This is a big one. Give me a quick key to the game here, Seth. Do, do you agree with Fonz at all? No, I think Vernon Carey's got to stay out of foul trouble. I think it's the most important thing in this game. And then if he stays out of foul trouble, they pound him on the glass. Rebounding will be key. I think Duke rebounds. Duke wins the game. Yeah, re rebounding and transition are the two keys. Anytime you play North Carolina, you've got to keep them out of transition. That's who they are, and especially it's who they are right now in their last three games. Okay, we're going to take you to Assembly Hall in just a second. Before this crowd... Who and by how many? Dayton make the final four. 